Final race on the program is the Arc de Triomphe Champions Handicap. It's a class three, though, over the 1,200 metres. Headed by Starlight, fourth course and distance, last time out behind Orion. It's a five-time course and distance winner. Smart Boy, course and distance winner, two starts back. Harrier Jet was runner-up in that Orion. It's uh, race, big fortune. He ran uh, ninth on that occasion behind Harrier Jet and Starlight. We've got 8080 and Zero Hedge. Both come here with uh, winning form. Star of Joy coming off the all-weather. Nice Fandango's on a hat-trick. And Sunny Dragon, well, he was a course and distance winner himself last season. So a very competitive uh, final event. We've made our way back to the touchscreen to have a look at this one, uh, John. Should be going pretty quick with uh, nice Fandango. Showing plenty of dash and 80-80 possibly down there on the rail. Yeah, they've both shown uh, good speed in their races. Nice Fandango has gone uh, really well uh, of late, uh, pushing forward up into this class for the first time. This fellow's interesting, Harry Jet. We're going to uh, possibly see him a little bit later on. Uh, he gets gate one again. He ran really well when he was sort of shunted back through the field last time out. And he gets gate one, and I think he'll go pretty well too. And Starlight towards the rear of the field as well. I think he's interesting too because he's shown a really good kick in his races. And if they go too fast out in front, he'll be lurking there in behind and uh, might just be able to uh, finish off over the top of quite a few. Yeah, there's plenty of winning form uh, to work with yeah. here, though, Brett. There is, Andrew, yeah. We've got to focus on Starlight too. I wonder whether Zach Purton from gate six might try and stay one off the fence give himself a clear run, but he's certainly working up towards another win. He had a great start at the start of the season, winning three, and uh, recent efforts suggest that he's very close again. The pace will suit. Paul Lally has highlighted this horse a couple of times in track work, and he has been working well, the former Australian galloper. He's had shocking barriers last start and again there on Wednesday night, barrier 12, but he's going quite nicely, and Umberto Rispoli sticks with him. An 80-80, a very solid performance from him last start. He will take the rise in class, drawn perfectly in barrier three. Uh, he continues to uh, impress in the morning, only had the five starts. It looks like there's still more to come from him. Yeah, well, we'll see 80-80 in a second, but let's uh, start off with the, uh, the starlight race from last time out. Uh, well, Harry Jet actually finishes in front of him this occasion. Still only one win to his name, finishing second, though, behind the front-running Orionage. The other horse is uh, to keep an eye on. Uh, Starlight out the back. Got a bit of a check coming into the, uh, the home turn and the aforementioned big fortune. Yeah, I think the, the positives for Starlight here is that he's dropped three pounds, he carries three pounds less, and his last two is at 11 and 9, whereas barrier six this time for Zach Purton, so he can probably posse up a a length or two closer, maybe stay one off the fence, and that'll give him the opportunity to close on what looks to be a strong tempo. Here, Orion is obviously led all the way. Harrier Jet was a great run in defeat, but there's a, quite a few ticks for me for Starlight in this contest. Harrier Jet was a little bit unlucky. Uh, obviously, he drew well gate one. He went the shortest way, but he, he didn't get the clearest of runs a couple of times. He finished off strongly. Mm. I think he can run well again here, and uh, there is evidence that when they go really quick out in front, uh, he'll be fine staying on well, so... All right, OK. Well, let's have a look at uh, some of the other contenders. Um, starting off with 80-80. Uh, with Got a bit of a pressure on, uh, on this occasion but was uh, still good enough to win. Yeah, I thought this was a really good run because Royal Prerogative, the horse on his outside there, really did pressure and hustle and harry him for a large chunk of the run. They went 22-7 for the middle section, which is quick enough, uh, and he was on that speed the whole time, and he still found lesser horses uh, might have uh, been gassed by that. Uh, and he was, I suppose, clinging on in the latter stages, but that's a decent horse in behind Golden Glory. Grade one as uh, Frank Deform subsequently auto pay has been running well as well, so I think there's a lot to like about 80-80's chances. Yeah, of the last start winners, I think he's the one that's still got more progress in him. Oh, nice Fandango, we're going to look at him shortly, but I get the feeling there's a bit more scope with 80-80. Yeah, and you said grade one was a winner on yeah. the weekend, so it's uh, good odds. Now, Zero Hedge has uh, won two of his last um, three starts. Joe Moreira on board for this, whether he had the choice or not. He stays with 80-80, so uh, the ride goes to Olivia it, Deleuze. Yeah, that might be a little tip in itself, Andrew, but yes, he's up in class for the first time, um, you know, similar to 80-80. You would presume that Joe's opted to ride the six as, as opposed to the seven. This was a good effort. Um, Paul had highlighted his work in the morning as being very strong. He hadn't had a run for four months. Still a relatively lightly raced horse himself. So he's got scope for improvement. The horse that ran second to him yep. there has got an awkward barrier earlier on but might run well. So I'm not saying that he can't feature in the finish, but I'd probably go with 80-80 as opposed to zero hedge at this stage. He was fairly close to a fairly easy speed last time out. He's mm. not going to get quite uh, soft sectionals, I don't think, this time out. So we'll see how he gets on. All right, a nice Fandango. One down the straight at uh, Shah 10, then backed it up with this at the Valley. Yeah, he's uh, flying at the moment for Casper Founds. He obviously carries his head high. He looks a little bit awkward in the way that he does race, but he's super fit. He's going to come in with a lightweight. And looking at the pace of the race, I dare say he'll snare the front. It's just whether or not he can 
you know, hold off the challenges from the horses that have got the class already on the board. So I'm thinking maybe not, but um, who's to knock his form? I tried to find a place and couldn't quite, but I would be surprised if he runs, runs well. Yeah. And uh, Jack Wong's riding uh, certainly well as well. Mm. But uh, nice Fandango. We can pull off the hat trick. We will find out in due course. Big Fortune Bred has come up as our favourite. Uh, sorry, no, he hasn't. Uh, 8080 has come up as our favourite. Big Fortune $26. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been a shock. Who do you like? <laughs> well, he has drawn that awkward barrier, but he's working well, so he might be one to sneak in maybe to the exotics. But I just as I mentioned before, I think the tick's here for Starlight. He gets three pounds off his back and he gets a better barrier and a strong tempo. So that, I think... Makes him very hard to hold out. He's very well rated now, close to his best. Harry Jett, as John's pointed out, I think might be the danger. And then 80-80 of the, the horses that have won their last start, I think he's probably the, the choice. And I'm the Conquest has got an awkward barrier, but he's got the 10 pounds off his back this time. So I just wanted to have him in ahead of Nice Fandango. So one, three, six and eight. But I think a cue here with Starlight as the banker might be the way to go. Now I've got Starlight in the tips, but I'm going to go with 80-80 on top, going to make him the best of the night as well. I thought there was a lot to like about his previous run. Harrier Jet gets a good draw again. Starlight will stay on well, and Smart Boy always stays on well when they go a good gallop. But I think you've just got to back the six to win here. All right, fair enough. I'm with Starlight, but the same four numbers as you. Once more, John. Right, as far as the stats are concerned, is there anyone in hotter form at the moment than Zach Burton? No, simple <laughs> as that. Um, we're at four on the weekend, now within four of, uh, of levelling up with Joe Marrera. We know Joe's got a suspension coming up, so the battle for the championship is uh, well and truly on. Joe's got eight rides, I think probably got the better book uh, as opposed to Zach, but we can see Zach's got seven and he finishes strongly with the judge, Fortune Booth, who could both easily win and then Starlight in the last. So uh, I'd be surprised if uh, they don't get uh, a win or two each. But we've highlighted Starlight as potentially the one to uh, to watch. All right, he's five dollar chance at uh, the moment. I know you're going to take him on, John. Yep. What are the best bets then, Brett? I think Gold Velvet um, just looks a different horse. Chad Schofield's been working with him since his last start win. It's a harder race, but he looks to have uh, plenty under the bonnet now that he's changed stable. And Team Fortune only had the one start at the Valley, seven six. It's a tough race, but he might add some value to those uh, exotics. Play. Um, this is a tough race too. I went Flying Monkey, Lucky Lucky Ra Chu in race number three, a little QQP. If you want to stretch it wider, throw in Dominator. I'm an 80-80 man in race number eight, horse number six. I think uh, he's got lots going for him and I think he'll improve on his last start. And Merry Go wins a very big price at the moment with winking Umberto Rispoli aboard. Gallant return victory power is the Quinella of the night on Wednesday, <laughs> two and five in that particular race. All right, well, Gunnison for me, Joe Moreau in the saddle. He's got fortune booth to beat, but um, I think he's going places. And multi-facets from the front, uh, Alvin Ong on board there. Race six, number five, same race as John in actual fact. This, if John's isn't the Quinella of the night, this is the QP of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Super Turbo, Fortune Booth and Gunnison as well. All right, that's uh, done. Looking forward to the weekend, though. Group 1 action. Yeah, chemical charges here arrived on Sunday night and, uh, yeah, the build-up will continue toward the champions and Chater. All right, well, that's the show. Thanks for watching. On behalf of Brett, John and the rest of the team, hopefully we'll see you at Happy Valley on Wednesday night when we will be racing to win. Goodbye. Goodbye.